Hello, my name is Grant, and you are watching Running to Redline, and today I'm going to be giving my top 10 list of the best used performance cars that you can buy under $100,000 in 2023. As of recent, the market has gotten pretty shuffled up, and a lot of cars have ended up in entirely different places. So I went ahead and compiled pretty much all the research that I could as far as what the best options are, and I'm just going to be going through my list of what I consider to be the top 10 performance cars that you can get under $100,000. Now, you may disagree with some of these or think that I missed any cars and if that happens to be the case leave a comment down below letting me know what that car is that way other people that are looking for a vehicle in this price range can be more aware of what else is out there and available for purchase so with that being said let's get started so starting our list off at number 10 is the Ferrari 360 Modena that Ferrari released right at the turn of the millennia. Now this car ran from 1999 to 2004 and came with a classic flat plane crank V8 that pretty much all Ferraris are known for and produced that sound that we all know and love. Now the Ferrari 360 is not the fastest car in the world by today's standards, but for 1999, 3.9 seconds dash to 60 miles an hour was pretty impressive. And nowadays due to depreciation, these cars are available pretty much well under $100,000, and that means that you could have yourself a Ferrari for somewhere in the vicinity of eighty dollars to $90,000. Now, these cars came with a manual transmission as the primary option, but also with a semi-automatic transmission, which was technically a manual that was shifted with an actuator that Ferrari made. They called it like an F1 style transmission, but manual is pretty much going to be the way to go on these cars. Now, the speed is the reason that it is so far down on this list. A Mustang GT nowadays for 30 30 $35,000 can produce pretty similar numbers to this car at a fraction of the price and the other issue that you were going to have with these cars is they are unreliable and they are old and Ferrari parts are not cheap so cost of ownership on this one's going to be high but it is pretty cool to think that you can have a classic beautiful Ferrari for under $100,000. Now getting into some of the pros and cons of the Ferrari 360 it has that prestige to it where it is clearly an exotic car and Ferrari is considered kind of the premium supercar brand and it is definitely considered an exotic car. You don't see these frequently and they definitely have the look. The other great thing about the Ferrari 360 is that flat plane crank V8 that sits mid-engine and sounds really really nice. Has that nice high pitched naturally aspirated Ferrari sound to it and the car as a whole feels very special whether you're looking at it from the outside or sitting on it on the inside. Ferrari does a really good job of making the driver feel at home and like they are truly having a special experience. Now the exterior of these cars is absolutely beautiful. I don't think it's aged very much. The car literally is 20 years old at this point and still looks better than a lot of the things that you see on the road today. Now, some of the downsides of this car, it is unreliable and it is old. These cars are also nearly 20 years old and having a 20 year old Ferrari means that it's going to be expensive to fix when things inevitably break. And lastly, it is one of the slowest cars on this list. For its time, it was an absolute animal. However, today, because cars have gotten so fast and technology has improved so much, this car is not going to blow your mind from a speed and performance standpoint. Now, looking at some of them online here, you can see there's plenty available for well under $100,000, some even down into the 70s with less than 30,000 miles on them, but for 80 to 90,000, you can get yourself a really nice example. Coming in at ninth is the 2004 to 2007 Lamborghini Gallardo. And in case you're unfamiliar with Lamborghini, they usually have been running pretty much two cars at once for the past two decades. Right now, they have the Huracan and the Aventador, but in the previous generation, they carried the Murcielago as their higher end car, and the Gallardo was pretty much the predecessor to the Huracan. Now, there will be some more modern cars later on on this list, as I do want to consider cost of ownership, as they get pretty high on these older Ferraris and Lamborghinis. But for under $100,000, the Lamborghini Gallardo is is an absolute steal. I have had the privilege of riding in one before and it is quite an experience. That 5 liter V10 produces one of the greatest sounds I have ever heard in my life and the all wheel drive system of these cars makes for an absolutely brutal ride. Now on paper they're not the fastest in the world taking 4 seconds to get to 60, however when you are sitting inside of the car because of that all wheel drive system and the rear or the mid engine configuration it actually has quite a monstrous feel to it. You're sitting in the seat and instead of the front end lifting up like a normal accelerating car would, it kind of pulls down because of the all-wheel drive and it really gives you that gut punch. Like it is a, a very unbelievable feeling. It feels much faster than it is and the entire car is just an absolute riot. Now they came with that same V10, usually in a manual, but they also did offer what was known as an e-gear. It's kind of similar to Ferrari's semi-automatic transmission where there is a clutch involved and you do have to get it replaced every once in a while, but you can get these in an automatic 
configuration. And similar to the 360, you are getting a Lamborghini for under $100,000. So if you are into that and kind of the world of having an exotic car, this is one of the cheapest ways to do it. Now, some of the positives about this car is that same V10 engine. This is produced by Audi actually, as Audi bought Lamborghini in the late 90s, and that means that it is actually a pretty reliable engine, and it does sound very, very good. Now, these cars are pretty rare nowadays, you do not see a lot of them, and they are definitely considered to be an exotic. Now, that all-wheel drive system gives that gut punch feeling that I was talking about. It's almost like when you lose your stomach on a roller coaster, but it is really, really fun to ride in one of these. They also have a much higher build quality than previous Lamborghinis, as once Audi purchased the company, the cars seem to be built a lot better and a lot more thorough. Now, some of the cons of the Gallardo include the expensive maintenance and repair costs. It's an old Lamborghini similar to the 360, you're going to have issues. The handling is not great on these cars as they're mainly meant for acceleration and just the exotic factor of them. And for whatever reason, the turning radius on these cars is actually pretty terrible. If you wanna try and make a U-turn, it is really, really difficult. Now, I believe this is due to the all-wheel drive system requiring wider tires up front and then they take up more of the wheel well and start to rub against the fender, so the turning radius of these cars is not great. Now, looking at some of them online, similar to the 360, this is pretty easy to find under $100,000. Here's a nice one that I found. It's a 2004 in yellow. It's a coupe for $89,000 with pretty low mileage, and it looks quite pristine in my opinion, so I do think the Gallardo is a heck of a steal. Moving into something more modern, coming in at number 8 is the 981 Porsche Cayman GT4, and we're specifically going to be looking at the 2016 model year. Now, this Cayman, oddly enough, never came with a PDK transmission and was only optionable with a manual. Now, some of the lower level Caymans did have the PDK, but the GT4 for this generation, for whatever reason, never came with it until it was eventually added for the 718 GT4s, which start to creep out of our price range. Now, the Cayman is no acceleration monster taking four seconds to reach 60 miles per hour but that's not the point of these cars the Cayman GT4 is essentially supposed to be the ultimate track weapon for under a hundred thousand dollars and it does a pretty good job at that it's one of the lightest cars on this list just shy of 3,000 pounds and the minute that you get it onto a track the car really does come alive the engine is the same that we see in the 911 with that 3.8 liter flat six sounds very nice on track and overall creates a very good driving experience and is truly a driver's car as any Porsche tends to be. Now the Cayman GT4 has a lot of positives that we did not see in the previous two cars and that is modern technology and styling. This car is pretty modern and updated comparatively to a lot of other vehicles that came prior to it and even at the same time as it. It has the same flat six sound that you get in any Porsche 911 and also comes with an Alcantara interior, the dashboard, the steering wheel, the shifter knob, all of it is Alcantara and it looks and feels very nice. Now it's a very engaging driver's car. The Cayman will really push you to learn and become better as a driver. The car will generally be faster than most drivers capabilities and that's a very good way to become a faster driver in a track setting. And lastly, these cars have been out long enough that they've proven to be pretty solidly reliable. Not many issues have been reported with these cars and they've held up very good over time. So if you're looking to have a cheaper cost of ownership, this could be a very good option. Some of the downsides would be the no PDK for this generation of the GT4. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't, but the manual that you do get is still quite good. And the other thing is what you would call 911 syndrome in that you could have always bought a 911 for the same money and you will always be wondering if, you know, maybe you should have went with Porsche's higher level car, but that is all up to you. Now, getting into some of the cars that I was able to find online, these are pretty ready, readily available under $100,000, many with very low mileage, like somewhere some that were down in the you know 10 to 12,000 vicinity like this car here was listed for $99,000 and had 12,000 miles on it and is a pretty beautiful example of a 981 GT4. As we move on to number seven, I think Godzilla is just going to stomp his way onto this list because we're talking about the R35 GTR Premium. Now, the R35 debuted in 2009 and runs pretty much until current. However, the years that we're gonna be able to find under $100,000 ran from 2009 to 2017, and you actually can find these in the premium trim level. Now, the GTR is one of the best accelerating cars on this list, only taking 2.9 seconds to reach 60 miles an hour, as it has that all-wheel drive system 
system paired with that 3.8 liter V6 twin turbo that makes the iconic sound that we all know as the Nissan GTR. Now it is a pretty big car weighing in at 3,800 pounds. So if you want to do any kind of track days or any kind of performance driving in that sense, the GTR might not be the best option as this weight does pretty much translate to rather poor handling. However, these cars are also one of the cheapest on this list with many available from 65 to 75,000 even. And the GTR is a pretty good package all around if you're looking for something maybe a bit more low profile that still produces supercar like performance. Now, some of the pros and cons of the Nissan GTR are its acceleration that is pretty much the highlight of this car. You can even modify them to make them like 1500 horsepower and then the acceleration is just absolutely mind blowing. But even if you're staying stock, a lot of the parts and maintenance are pretty cheap and Godzilla is known as Godzilla because of the iconic sound that the car produces and there's a lot of history around these cars. They've been around since the 60s and the GTR is pretty much a legend in my books. They're also findable well under 100k and there's a large aftermarket support for these cars. You can pretty much slap whatever the heck you want on them, make them extremely fast. You see them with 2,000 horsepower even. Go to any local drag strip. There's even entire uh, drag racing events with only GTRs. So there is is plenty of power and acceleration to go around. Now, some of the downsides are the poor handling due to the weight of the car, but that's not really the point. So if you're looking for acceleration, this is really the main car that you want to be queuing in on. Now, the other thing is that in my opinion, and you might disagree with this, I think they're beginning to get a little bit dated. Now, this generation has been out for about 12 years. So you are starting to get pretty old and tired of seeing them. So that is something to you know be conscious of. And lastly, I don't think they're the most eye-catching compared to other cars on this list. And you might like that. If, that. if you want something more low profile and under the radar, these cars might be a better fit, but they're not gonna be like a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, or a Porsche where they might catch your eyes a little bit more. So some of the ones that we were able to find were well under $100,000. Many around 70,000 tends to be where they seem to be sitting, some even down into like high 50s low 60s but for good examples you're going to be looking around 80 to 85. At six, we have the very unpractical, but also very beautiful Lotus Evora GT. And this is the newest iteration of the car. This one ran from 2020 to 2021, is mainly the years that I've been able to find at a good price. And the Evora GT is a very unique car. It is one of the most race car-like vehicles that you can really buy regardless of price range, and is very stripped down and meant to be a very raw feeling car. And this is pretty much what Lotus has done for for the entirety of the road car existence, but the Avora GT really does encapsulate them getting much better at it over the past decade. Now, the Avora GT has internals and an engine from a Toyota, which does make up for the lack of reliability that these cars have been said to have in the past. The Toyota engine has proven itself pretty reliable and also has more than enough power to get this car moving. It's a very light car weighing in at just over 3,100 pounds, and the Avora GT is meant similar to a Cayman to be a track weapon. Now, they're pretty rare, you don't see them very frequently, and they definitely do have that exotic car factor where a lot of people probably don't even know what they are. They come with a supercharged version of that Toyota V6. That sounds really cool, you could hear the supercharger whining right behind your head, and the interior of these cars is a lot nicer than previous Lotuses as well. Some of the old Elises and whatnot maybe had like some aluminum floor panels and just like exposed bits. It got pretty weird, but the interior has been much more refined now, and Lotus has really figured out how to build a road car and this car is pretty much the pinnacle of what they have managed to accomplish. Now getting into some of the pros and cons of the Avora GT, they are very rare. You almost never see them. They are pretty hard to come by and for that they definitely are a bit cooler due to their scarcity factor. The handling of these cars is really quite phenomenal. It is very race car like. It feels like a race car. It handles like a race car. The car is very low to the ground. That center of gravity is really pulled down by the design and that makes for a really nice experience where the car seems pretty much just glued to the road. Now, it's one of the best manual transmissions that you can also find. They have been said to feel really, really just smooth. Like everything is machined pretty much perfectly. There's no looseness in the shifts and the transmission is actually very satisfying to work with. Now, it has that Toyota engine, which is going to mean cheap parts and reliability, and that is something that you are going to be hard-pressed to find in many performance cars, but this Lotus actually does have that. They're extraordinarily unpractical. I mean, you're not going to really fit anything in these cars. They do have 
a frunk but there's not a whole lot of space in there pretty much useless if you want to use it for anything else but driving it for fun and they are pretty hard to service anywhere but a dealership as not many people are familiar with these cars and will willingly work on them as they are pretty scared to break them because lotus does a lot of weird stuff outside of the engine uh, their transmissions and things like that are not built by toyota they are still lotus and as a result of that a lot of people are scared to work on them and these cars similar to the elise are very hard and consumables tires brake pads these cars just eat them i don't really know why but do keep that in mind and if you go ahead and look out there you can find a pretty much brand new one like these are pretty new vehicles like this one here has 6,000 miles on it and is listed for just under $90,000 it's a beautiful red one and these cars just look really really sharp from every angle I don't think they have a bad angle and it is definitely one of the best buys that you can get under $100,000 as we get into our top five, we're gonna be looking at the car that later on became the twin to the Lamborghini Gallardo, and that is the Audi R8 V10 edition. Now, this engine was eventually carried on to the Lamborghini Huracan after 2014, but this 5.2 liter that you can find in these cars is what pretty much definitively makes it a supercar. This is the cheapest modern supercar you can buy that is not considered to be on the edge. There's an ongoing debate with a lot of cars, such as like C8 Corvettes or things like that, over are they a supercar, are they not a supercar? Well, the R8 definitively is, and if you were growing up in the same time and age that I was, you originally saw this car in the first Iron Man movie. It's one of the coolest looking cars that money can buy under $100,000, and it has the performance to back it up. The R8 sprints from 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds, which is pretty quick for what the car weighs, and overall is just a very good handling package. It's a very high quality car, built very nicely by Audi. The interior is very luxurious, it has that nice Audi heads up display that they put in pretty much all of their vehicles and in general this is a very good mix of luxury performance and an exotic car all in one as we get into some of the pros and cons of the audi r8 it has that v10 sound that we all know from the huracan and the r8 that pretty much progressed over the next decade and is one of the nicest sounding vehicles that you can find. It's a very tightly knit V10 and makes a very high pitched but neat sound and is definitely once again considered a supercar. The build quality is extremely high. They've proven to be reliable over the past decade. These cars have been out for long enough to know what the issues are and there are some but mainly nothing with the engine so you should be fine from a big repair standpoint. They're very luxurious inside and give a nice feel to the driver pretty much wherever you're going. It's very nice to the touch and feel. All the fit and finish of the car is very nicely done and is overall one of the probably most comfortable places to be out of any of the cars on this list. Some of the downsides of the R8, it shared the same problem the Gallardo did where the clutches don't really last very long usually around 20,000 miles then you have to get it replaced which will run you usually about 3,500 US dollars which isn't exactly cheap so that is something to keep in mind and as far as reliability is concerned the engines have proven to be pretty bulletproof, but the suspensions of these cars actually have had some issues here and there. The shocks have been said to start leaking, and the lower rear wishbones of the suspension can completely fail on you. They could just kind of snap in half, and eventually you'll have to go get those replaced, which is not going to be cheap. And that kind of leads into my last point, which is that any repairs that you have to get to one of these cars is going to be pretty expensive. As we go ahead and look at what is out there, there's a lot of these under $100,000, mainly in the V8 version, but for for the V10s, you're going to be kind of a little bit harder pressed to find them, but there's still plenty, but generally about ninety dollars to $95,000 will get the job done. In fourth place, we have the newest car on this list, and that is the 2022 brand new generation of the BMW M4 Competition. Now, the M4 has always been a great performance car, and I actually put it as the number one car that you could find under $50,000 if you haven't seen that video. Something should be popping up in the top right. Definitely be sure to go check that out. But the M4 Competition is pretty much that car dialed up to the max. The 2022 generation got a pretty controversial refresh as far as the looks are concerned, with the front end looking like it has two big buck teeth. It personally still has not really grown on me yet, but you might like it. Looks aside though, the M4 Competition is one of the best performing cars that you can get under $100,000. The acceleration is legitimately insane, producing a 0-60 to 60 time of 2.8 seconds due to the xDrive system the BMW creates, similar to all-wheel drive where it'll help it get off the line without losing any traction. 
As far as the handling of this car is concerned, it produced 1.06 Gs on the skid pad and is a very good handling package. These cars are extremely track oriented and whenever BMW makes an M competition car, generally the point of it is to try and get its Nürburgring time as low as possible. So this is pretty much the ultimate performance machine, or as BMW would say, the ultimate driving machine. I really went there. However, the M4's performance is not to be discounted, and although it might not be as exotic or share the same looks that a lot of the cars on this list do, the sheer performance that you get at this price point is why it's found its way so high up this list. Now, some of the pros and cons of this car are its performance all around. It has a very sharp transmission. If there's anything BMW does good, it's the transmissions in their M cars are very precise. They're very sharp. They shift extremely fast. It's near a PDK level, and the interior of these cars is pretty luxurious the seats are absolutely awesome and they're pretty low profile as well similar to something like a GTR they're gonna run a little bit more under the radar and in my opinion that is definitely something that should be considered a positive they're pretty much a brand new vehicle so that is something pretty great about them and the only downsides that I would say is that the reliability of them is pretty unknown it is a brand new car and a brand new generation so we don't really know how they're gonna hold up over time BMW is kind of hit or miss with this some M cars hold hold up great and are plenty reliable and others are absolutely disastrous to own so only time will tell. There is also a massive depreciation inevitable if you buy one of these vehicles as with pretty much any new vehicle and new BMWs in particular they are going to depreciate a ton over the course of the next decade and lastly they might not feel as special as some of the other options on this list as they can look pretty much like any other normal BMW to someone who doesn't really know what the car is. Now some of the examples that I was able to find online were pretty much brand new vehicles with like one, two, three thousand miles, well under a hundred thousand dollars, some of them around eighty to eighty-five, and you'll pretty much be able to find whatever example of one that you will desire under a hundred thousand dollars with very little issues or problems. Coming in third, we have a better looking and even faster version of something like an M4 competition in the 2016 to 2019 Mercedes AMG GTS. Now this is quite literally the fastest track car ever made when you get to the highest echelons of it, as the AMG GTS Black Series, at least when this video was made, is currently the fastest production car to ever do a lap around the Nürburgring, but the GTS is a heck of a package for well under $100,000. It weighs in at just about 3,600 pounds, which is a pretty average weight, but it makes up for that with a 4 liter V8 twin turbo that has a very low growly sound, similar to something like an Aston Martin, that propels it to a 3.7 second zero to 60 time and the most impressive attribute to this car is easily its handling as it did 1.09 g's on the skid pad which is the highest of any car that we're going to be talking about today but the gts is the ultimate combination of luxury performance and looks now this car is extremely luxurious if you go ahead and just look up look up like a picture of the interior in one of these you'll be absolutely blown away by what the driver gets to experience at this price point. And the AMG GTS really does not have many flaws to it. It looks really, really nice, has that same kind of look and side profile as something like the old SLS AMG Gullwing. It's pretty much the more modern updated version of the car. And the V8 that comes in it is pretty much the centerpiece of a very high quality driving experience that will absolutely blow you away at this price range. Now, the pros and cons of the AMG GTS are the well-rounded performance that you receive. It literally does it all. It's fast in a straight line. It has very good braking power. It is very good around turns. It literally does everything in the world of performance that you could ever want. It's extremely luxurious like any Mercedes vehicle and is definitely considered to be pretty exotic. Every time I see one, I pretty much recognize it right away and these cars can definitely turn heads. They've been out long enough to show their own reliability. AMGs, similar to something like a BMW M car, can be hit or miss where some will have a bunch of catastrophic issues and others will be some of the best cars that people ever own and these cars have shown to be pretty problem free and the other positive for them is that they've already depreciated significantly the people that already bought these cars ahead of us or got them new have taken the big hit and i don't think that they will go much lower but Obviously, I'm not able to predict the market, so that is just a theory. 
Now, some of the downsides of the AMG GTS is that the transmission has some strange issues. It's been said to kind of do some odd shifting at times or even just like forget to shift and let the RPMs just climb sky high. And the only other thing is it has a very stiff ride quality. Now, it is a performance vehicle, so you would expect something like this out of it, but a lot of modern vehicles in the same category might have something like an active suspension where you can put it into a comfort mode and the ride quality gets a little bit softer, but the AMG GTS doesn't have that, so so it is going to be pretty stiff at all times, but overall, very good package. Now, as we go ahead and look at what is out there, these are pretty widely available in the 70s even. So this is where a lot of the cars at the higher end of this list are going to find themselves is that they beat a lot of the other cars in terms of performance at a fraction of the price. This one here was just under $70,000 in a beautiful green color that looks absolutely phenomenal in these cars. It was down in Miami with low mileage and one of the best buys that you can make. Now, if you've been sitting there wondering how there has not been a 911 on this list, your wish has been granted because at number two, we have the Porsche 991.2 Carrera S. And this is the car of the 911 that ran from 2015 to 2017 in particular, is what I was able to find the best prices on. And this car came with either the manual, similar to the Cayman GT4, but it did also come with Porsche's PDK, which is one of the biggest positives to the driving experience that the 911 Carrera S can provide. Now, the Carrera S comes with a little bit more power and has a 3.8 liter flat six that makes 400 horsepower. So it definitely is no joke when it comes to straight line speed. And the 911 is known to be one of the best handling vehicles ever made. The rear engine creates a weight distribution that has power over the rear wheels and allows the car to get a lot of traction out of slow corners and is definitely something that is best experienced on a track. The 991 generation still carries a lot of the most modern technology that has made the latest iteration of this legend as good as as it is. Some of the other positives of this car are the PDK transmission option that is something that was dearly missed with the Cayman GT4s, but Porsche's PDK, in case you are unfamiliar, is quite simply the best dual clutch transmission ever made. It shifts extremely sharp and fast and really contributes to the quality of the sound that the car makes. Something I love about Porsche, other than the sound of their engines, is when they are paired with this PDK transmission, the shifts are so fast and precise that it just makes the sound 10 times better. These cars also have a large heritage around them. The 911 is one of the biggest sports cars icons of all time, and that is definitely a community that you would like to be a part of. And the reliability of them has held up literally over almost a century now, and the driving experience remains pretty much unmatched. So the 911 991.2S is going to be pretty much the ultimate driver's car under $100,000. The only two things that I can knock it for is that they've been said to have quite a bit of fuel pump issues. That is a pretty common problem, but a pretty cheap replacement as well and they might depreciate a little bit further but as we've seen in the past nobody can predict the 911 market if you go and try and buy one from the 90s good luck because they are worth double what they were when they were new so as we look at what is available currently they are pretty much all over the place for in the 90,000 range some in the 80s but your best examples are going to be somewhere between 85 to 95,000 in the Carrera S version and all in all this is one of the best all-around performance vehicles that you could buy and coming in number one, I just had to do it. I continuously wanted to not like this car. I thought it was a Ferrari copycat, and I was trying to say, oh, you know, it's a lot cheaper than the others, so it shouldn't be as high as it is, but you simply cannot argue with it. It is the C8 Corvette Z51. This is the newest generation of the Corvette that released in 2020, and this car literally does not step a foot wrong. It is the fastest car on this list in every facet of performance. It's a zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds, which is just absolutely ridiculous. I've had the privilege of driving one of these cars and the handling of it is literally unbelievable. I've also driven a McLaren 650S and I have to say that this car is better. It is better than a McLaren 650S and it is $65,000 new. You simply cannot argue with that. It has the 6.2 liter LT2 V8 that absolutely screams. It's a mid-engine car. This is pretty much the big thing around the C8 Corvette is that they have finally moved the engine to the middle of the car to get more traction over the rear wheels. And my God, did it work. This car is just, it's unfathomable good how well they have done with a car that you can buy for $65,000 and if you want to see more of what I'm talking about this I actually had the chance to review one of these cars you'll be getting a pop-up on the screen now and I'm also going to put the link to that review in the description but definitely go check that out to really see what this car is about I'm really impressed that it absolutely does it all and because of the price alone I have to put it above everything else 
Maybe something like the AMG would feel a little bit more luxurious. Or maybe the Porsche would be a bit of a more refined driving experience, but for an all-around package with price considered, the C8 Corvette is going to be the most unbeatable option that I was able to find. As we look at the pros and cons of this vehicle, it is pretty much brand new. I mean, you can get a C8 Corvette new for $35,000 underneath budget, but if you're going to want it with the Z51 package and a bit more options, you're probably going to be looking at about $85,90, but it is a brand new car, something that a lot of vehicles on this list have not been able to say. The parts and maintenance are extremely extremely cheap coming from GM. The LT engine series is pretty much the successor to the LS series and has proven to be extremely reliable with cheap parts, easy to fix, and that is one of the biggest things that this car has going for it. The interior is absolutely incredible. Corvettes in past generations have struggled in this field, but having sat inside of one, the C8 interior is truly something amazing. It is very catered to the driver. The entire kind of display and buttons wraps around the entire driver's seat, and and it just feels so special to sit inside of. It is also the fastest car on this list in pretty much every facet of performance, and there's a massive community and history around Corvettes. Lastly, the car is $65,000 new, and I'll just let that speak for itself. Now, some of the downsides of the C8 is that there's such a big demand and wait list on these cars that if you want to buy them new, you have to basically sit on this wait list for six months to a year until they can finally build your car, if not even longer than that. So as a result, if you want to buy one used, they're actually more expensive. It's a pretty odd market for these cars right now, but you're going to be looking about 90, 95,000 for a good used one as you're pretty much paying to jump the wait list. The only kind of thing that I knocked it for while driving it is that it is pretty prone to understeer. I think the mid engine definitely likes to push the front end a little bit without getting it to grip a lot. So that was just a very small critique that I had of the car I know many other people have said the same thing. And lastly, the car will depreciate. You can go find a C7 Corvette for $40,000 right now. So these cars have repeatedly shown that they end up depreciating, and that will happen if you do buy one. Here are some of the examples I was able to find anywhere between really $75,000 to $95,000 for solid examples, all with low mileage. This one had 3,000 miles on it. It was in a really nice red mist metallic color. It was a 2LT package, which is one of the higher versions. It's not a base model by any means, and it is just all around the best deal that you're going to find under $100,000, and my pick for the top performance car under $100,000. So that's pretty much going to wrap up my list of the top 10 used performance cars under $100,000 that you can buy right now. And hopefully you enjoyed this video and at least found the video insightful in some way, shape, or form. And once again, if you think I missed anything or maybe would reorder any of the cars on this list, be sure to leave a comment down below so that I and other people are more aware of what else is out there. And that way we don't miss any cars in general. Now, if you've made it to the end and you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like on it. And if you're looking to see more stuff like this, consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss anything like this in the future. And that's going to be just about it for this video. So I thank you for watching and have a great day.